what's in a breakfast? Well, depends where you are in the world, but it can be a massive different array of foods. But there are some specific staples, and we're going to focus on some of those staples uh, that we see day to day in our culinary world. And so today we're going to be looking at breakfast cookery. This is Chef Hawks. We are on chapter four in our Pro Start 2 lineup. Let's jump in. So when we look at uh, breakfast service, we're looking at a couple of different ones that are very popular. And that, you, that one of those is American service. This is a plated service. So this is where all the food is plated in the kitchen. Um, and so that way it's served individually to the guests who have ordered their specific breakfast. Very traditional things in America are eggs, bacon, sausage, toast, coffee, tea, and juice. And then we have English service. English service is where it's been plated in the kitchen and it's served on platters to a host or a hostess who then will kind of dole it out to the rest of the table. So some traditional things on an English breakfast. We're looking at things like sausage, bacon, eggs, fried or grilled tomatoes, uh, baked beans, kippers, mushrooms, fried potatoes and blood pudding. Then we have continental service. Continental service is a much simpler type of service. This actually takes elements of both the American and English service um, and a few uh, European continental uh, types uh, where you would actually have bread rolls, muffins, toast, croissant, cereal, milk, juice, coffee, tea. This is regarded to be a lighter option to be able to have and very often for business meetings, things like that, this would be an option that would be taken because it's simple and someone can eat on the run, as it were. Then we have brunch. What is brunch? Well, this is where we splice together breakfast and lunch menu items. Um, and so this can create a massive array of different foods, which can be very interesting. It's actually generally regarded as a very fun weekend type of a meal to have, where there's not necessarily a specific time limit on things. Uh, whereas during the week, most, most of the time, we regard breakfast as your get up and get started. Your lunch is something in the middle of doing other things. Whereas brunch is normally a laid back kind of an affair. Uh, quite often it's served as a buffet. Um, and this will, uh, uh, this will take on the kind of image that you see in the picture here. Now let's start looking at some of, the, um, some of the specific items that we have on our breakfast traditionally. So when we're looking at the bread type of things, we've got things like pancakes, crepes, waffles, French toast. There's lots of different things. They're actually fairly similar to one another, um, but the recipe slightly alters and the method of cooking is slightly altered to have a different type of outcome. So first of all, let's take a look at pancakes. So this is made with a medium weight batter and cooked in a griddle. How to make pancakes. Begin by making the batter. Sift together one cup of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, and one half teaspoon of salt. One cup of milk, two tablespoons oil or clarified butter, and one egg. Combine the dry and wet ingredients and whisk the batter until smooth. Next, prepare a griddle or a large nonstick pan by heating over medium heat. Add one ounce of clarified butter or other fat of choice to the hot pan. Then ladle the batter into the hot pan. Allow the bottom to cook, looking for the edges to turn golden brown, and for bubbles to form in the top of the pancake. Cook the other side until golden brown. Remove from the heat and serve hot with the accoutrement of your choice. And that is how to make pancakes. And then we have a lighter alternative, crepes. These are like pancakes, except for they're much, much thinner. Uh, you shouldn't, when you're making a, a crepe, you shouldn't be making what a chef used to tell me as an army blanket. It should be a very, very thin uh, type of an elegant uh, type of a pancake. 
So this uh, it has a higher egg content to it. It's cooked on an oil griddle. Swedish pancakes are actually similar, but they're slightly sweeter and slightly heavier than uh, crepes as well. Making crepes. In a large bowl, sift together the dry ingredients. One cup flour, one tablespoon sugar, and a quarter teaspoon salt. Next, whisk all of the wet ingredients together. One and a half cups heavy cream, four eggs, and three tablespoons clarified butter. Combine the dry ingredients into the wet and whisk to create a smooth batter. No lumps. Heat a non-stick crepe pan, one with a very short lip around the edge, over medium-high heat. Add butter to the hot pan. When the pan is hot, ladle a small amount of batter into the pan. Starting from the center, use a crepe spatula to draw the batter around the pan into a circle. The batter should be in an almost paper-thin layer. It is essential not to overpour the batter. The edges of the batter will climb up the sides of the pan. Hold the pan over the heat and watch carefully for the edges to turn light golden brown. Take a spatula and gently run the tip around the edge of the pan to loosen the crepe. Flip the crepe over to cook on the other side, which should only take a minute. Serve finished crepes with an appropriate powdered sugar, fresh fruit, or a fruit compote. Making crepes. Waffles are very popular, so they're crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. Uh, so these are made with a medium weight batter, and they're cooked in a waffle maker or a waffle iron. That's how it gets those ridges and it gets the shapes and it gets that crisp edge. Then we have French toast. So this is where you have bread that you dip into an egg milk mixture. Um, and this can be seasoned up as well with may, uh, maybe some cinnamon, some nutmeg, those types of things. And then cooked in a griddle or on a pan. How to make French toast. Begin by preparing the batter. Whisk six eggs with one and a half cups cream, one teaspoon cinnamon, one teaspoon nutmeg, and three tablespoons clarified butter. Then prepare the pan. Heat a large nonstick saute pan over medium heat. Add an ounce of clarified butter or oil. Next, batter the bread. Dip the bread into the batter, coating the slice just enough so that both sides are wet, but the bread isn't falling apart. Then add the battered bread to the hot pan. Once the bottom is golden brown, use a spatula to flip the French toast over in the pan. Allow the other side to cook and brown. How to make French toast. So talking about waffles, when we make those, you prepare that batter first, then you have to let it rest. You actually want to allow the, the flour to fully saturate in there, and that way when it's rested, it comes out with a nicer, lighter, fluffier pancake, or sorry, a, a lighter and fluffier waffle where it, it, it isn't toughened up from the uh, gluten content tightening up at all from where it was mixed. You're going to coat the waffle iron with a little bit of oil or clarified butter or non-stick non -stick spray, and then pour the batter onto the hot surface right in the center there. And then you go and close the waffle iron down, cook it until it's golden brown, normally only takes maybe a minute and a half to two minutes to do, and then remove it and garnish it with maybe some strawberries, some syrup is always very popular too.
Breakfast meats. We have a few different options. And so we start off with bacon and sausage being the most popular. So bacon is uh, uh, our regular streaky bacon, as we would see uh, right here. This is about 70% fat, and that shrinks up a lot when it's cooked. You have to allow for that when you're working out the portion size per person, because a lot of that fat is going to be drawn out of it, and so you're going to get um, you're only going to get a smaller portion than you would when it was the uncooked weight. And then you have sausages. So we have uh, link sausages right here, where they link together in long chains before they're cooked, and then we have the sausage patties. A couple of different options to choose from there. You can pre-cook these to save time later on. All of these items have a good enough fat content that they will reheat um, quite nicely, but we always have to make sure that we're abiding by our safety rules so that we maintain that food outside of the temperature danger zone um, as much as possible. And then we also have ham, back bacon, and Canadian bacon. So when we look at these different items here, so this is Canadian bacon right here. This is for all intents and purposes, it's the loin. It's an eye of the loin of meat, uh, loin of pork. And so this is almost like a pork chop, but thinner slice of that pork chop. Uh, then you have the uh, then you have the ham. Uh, this is just one large slice of the ham, which has just been lightly browned. Uh, this generally is smoked and uh, smoked and cured, or smoked or cured. And then we also have uh, our back bacon. This is an English item here where. In the same kind of way as you get Canadian bacon, where it has that eye of meat from the loin. And then it also has a little of the streaky bacon um, right over on the side here. And so it gives you kind of the best of both worlds. And so, the, uh, so these items should always be cooked appropriately and, and until they're nice and uh, golden brown. And uh, in, the, in terms of the uh, rashers of bacon, you want to have those nice and crispy. Um, and so this gives a great... Uh, meat side to our breakfast, an additional part of the protein. When we're cooking up uh, those rashers of bacon, so you can cook them up in a fry pan or in a griddle uh, on medium heat, so it's controlled. Place them on uh, on sheet pans, bake them at 375 for a, or 191 Celsius until they're crisp and brown. Monitor them and turn them as needed as well, so you get nice, good, even cooking. When we look at things like fish, quite often fish is actually served cold. Uh, so we're talking about things like smoked salmon, trout, and kippers, which may be on the, on the smoked side quite often. Um, but you can also get some, uh, some hot cooked items as well. When we look at hash, so hash is a mixture of meat and potatoes and onions. You can have all sorts of other different types of uh, items in there, some chopped vegetables in there, and different types of meats in there as well. This is really something that can almost be seen as a breakfast in itself. And that's normally fried into patties. Now moving on to some of our starchier items, we have grits. Grits are a very Southern American uh, item. And so this is actually made from corn. It's a coarse ground corn. Uh, it's actually been treated with alkali. Um, but so this actually creates uh, a really nice uh, full flavored item, depending on what you want to put in there because it takes on all the flavors. So traditionally, you may just put some butter, salt and pepper on there. You can have it as a sweet item if you want to as well. Um, but then some people may want to put some uh, shrimp with it, uh, have, a nice, uh, have a nice sauce to go with that, a ham gravy or something like that to go with it. Or others may want to just put some cheese with them. Uh, they lend themselves very, very well to all sorts of different flavors. And then we have cereals. Well, we have hot and we have cold cereals. So our cold cereals are generally served with milk, maybe some sugar and some fruit on there as well. Um, and then our hot cereals, that's when we normally have things like uh, whole cracked or flaked grains, like oatmeal and cracked wheat. Um, and then this would, be, uh, this would be cooked so that the starch molecules will come out and thicken that, uh, that, that cereal up. So these are quite often uh, used with granular grains as well, farina cornmeal are quite often used as well. Then we also have lots of different kinds of breads. So toast is very common in the US and in the UK. Um, this is served with butter, honey, marmalade, jam, uh, of all sorts of different flavors. And but we also enjoy having bagels, biscuits, uh, which are kind of like um, uh, kind, kind of like a scone, except for, um, I guess, a little lighter and fluffier. Uh, croissants, 
which is made with a laminated dough, um, a traditional French item, and then donuts and coffee cake. We also have quite a few potato dishes as well. Um, so uh, two of the most popular are hashed potatoes. Uh, we actually see a photograph right over on the right hand side here where you're actually grating them and then uh, cooking them on, that, on the salad top to go and sear them into a cake. Um, and then home fries where you actually just dice up the potatoes. You can have onions, peppers, all sorts of other vegetables that you can add in there and you brown them off. Quite delicious. Uh, and cook just in a, in a regular oil or maybe some clarified butter and season. We also like to have fruit with our breakfast as well. Um, so uh, there's uh, traditionally grapefruit, bananas, strawberries are very popular. But there's other things like melons and pineapple that can also be enjoyed as well. There's also um, things like um, juice as well, which uh, fruit juice as well, which is very popular uh, to enjoy. And it's quick and easy if you're on the run. This is considered the traditional staple for most people most mornings. <laughs> we have um, the fried bread, English bacon, which is English back bacon. It's obviously a different taste to the American bacon. The pork sausage, which we have made with our British butcher. Um, Heinz baked beans, which are imported um, baked beans from England. Uh, fried tomatoes, grilled tomatoes here. Then underneath we've got fried mushrooms. The black pudding, which is also known as blood pudding. Well, where I'm from, the West Midlands, it's known as a delicacy. Ooh. I think American bacon is better. It's greasier. I mean, if you're going to get something unhealthy, just like get, go all the way. You know, This is really good. It's really hearty, but I think ours is just a little bit better. This looks more like a hot dog. Mm. What my taste buds are telling me is that this is deep fried in butter. And... Um, it's fantastic. Mm. Oh my god. It makes better toast. England. I feel like it's so random to have just a plain tomato for breakfast. Well, I'm not a big fan of tomatoes. I can appreciate a tomato. And this is a really, really good one. Mushrooms, they're okay. I feel like these belong in an omelet on their own. Uh, they seem lonely. Are beans a vegetable? Also, beans. Not a breakfast food in America. You know what? If I could have the sauce, the beans. That's good. English breakfast is basically like a barbecue. Black pudding is made of blood. It's lovely. It kind of looks like a corned beef hash. It's got like little like nuggets in there. I don't know what those are. I'm not a big fan of it on its own. Pudding is chocolate and dessert and sweet. You told me I'm going to have black pudding. Listen, I mean, this has been a very interesting experience, but to be honest, I, I still think that the American breakfast is a strong one. English breakfast is better than American breakfast. I'm sorry. This or Cinnamon Toast Crunch? I think this wins. Gotta give it to America. Because America, you can have dessert for breakfast. You can have, you know, like, you can have something sweet. You can have something savory. This just feels like dinner. So it's a tie? I think we might have just started the Second Revolutionary War. So many different things to choose from for breakfast, depending on where you are in the world. But it's uh, it's a great thing, and it's it's the most important meal of the day, right? So enjoy breakfast, enjoy cooking breakfast. So this has been Chapter 4. I hope everyone enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the kitchen. Cheers.